and see in the place to be and see hi guys and welcome at my channel it's me your ultra and see in the place to be yeah on this video here i want just to show you some uh, uh, great thing um, this is we can say you know a video about we can say uh, some hit guns um, why i do this video is just simple um, I just had about some people, we can say three, four, five people that was asking me, hey NSC, why the hell do you use about 500 or 600 degrees to reflow your PlayStation chips? Um, at last I need to say, <laughs> this is really simple to explain to these guys, um, it's not really 500 degrees or 600 degrees, but if you got a cheapy, we can say a chip, uh, heat gun just like this one then the temperatures they are not right so if you have here let's say about 500 degrees so the real temps they are about 350 or 380 maybe <laughs> so uh, the other thing is now I got here another one and that's why I do this video now because with this one I can explain you this I, ha I have this one here as long a time but I still like to use this one because I work uh, a long time with with this chip heat gun here but I already know how to work with that and that's we can say an important thing too so um, at all I want just to tell you or to show you the difference between we can say a good heat gun and a cheap heat gun so really this chip gun here is from power plus I have uh, buy it uh, I think about three years ago you can see it's really uh, dirty and bad and all uh, fucked up here <laughs> it's really an old one but um, I still can work very good with it because I know how to work with it and that's we can say very important to say also um, yeah on this one here we got two steps we got here we can say a low fan speed and we got here a higher fan speed so this one here has two steps for the fan uh, the other thing is now here you can regulate also here the temperatures if you turn here to the right or if you turn to the left. Um, I will show you this now right now. The other thing is uh, we got here we can say also two steps we got on this one we got three fans uh, we can say steps but the one is just called air so we can say we got also two steps like on this one but this one has three because you got one with cold air just 50 degrees the other one is, we can say, just like the yellow one, the first step. And then we got here, we can say, the second step, which is the same as with the yellow one. But like I told, this one here has three steps, but it doesn't matter. The first step is just cold air, like this one. Okay, this stays always at 50 degrees. I can also not set it higher because this goes automatically down. To 50 degrees like you can see and it doesn't matter what I tell him here he he will not go up because this is just cold air all right um like you should know uh, solder begins to melt uh, about uh, we can say yeah 250 degrees uh, solder begins to melt so um, just for you now, I will set now the heat gun on, let's say, 280 degrees. So we will now turn it on here. Now I need to set it at 280 degrees. That's why I turn it to the left side. Sorry, this was too fast. And here we go, 270 and 80. And like you can see, I cannot, I cannot set it perfectly, but it doesn't matter. So let's say we are now at 290, 280. So, yeah, we can let it like that. So now you see we are about 280, 290, it's really difficult to set this heat gun 
exactly. Now uh, I will just hold the solder in front and let's see if this will get melt or not. You can see I'm touching it. It just happens nothing. Okay, let's just move the light side so you can see we are still on 280 degrees. Still nothing. And I'm now a very long time in front. Just happens nothing. Okay. We're gonna now move to, uh, let's say, 350 degrees. Here we go. Let's let's let it like this. Let's test again the soldering wire on we can say 350 degrees. Nothing. And I'm really here on the front. I hope you can see that way. I have no reasons to lie. Let's see how much it is. Oh, it is at 360 degrees. Nothing. Now let's do the same now with, we can say, a better heat gun. I will set now as the same fan speed. And I will set it to, um, I think we had 280, yes, or it was 250, I don't know. Let's do 250, it doesn't matter. And we will do now a test with, we can say, the better heat gun. Like you can see, it begins to get melt. So the solder wire now begins to work, like you can see. Not that fast, but it works. You can see the soldering, it gets melt now, and it begins to solder. Or whatever it calls in English. But you know what I mean. Like you can see, we are now here on 200 degrees exactly. So that means the soldering now here begins really to get melt. So, if you have a heat gun just like this, you can now go and you can reflow it a lot better because the temperatures now are, we can say, nearly 100% true. But, on this one, uh -uh. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> on this one, <laughs> I don't know on how much degrees you need to set it, but I can tell you, on much more as on 250. So now, just to test it, let's do it again. I think we was here before at 360 degrees and it was still nothing. So I think I will go now for 400 degrees. Yep, 400, 410, doesn't matter for me. So or so, this is not exactly. <laughs> now let's uh, test it again. Oops, wait. So that you guys can see that better. Oh, it begins to melt, finally. On 400 degrees, it begins now to melt. So that means, that 400 degrees on this heat gun is, we can say, like 250 on the other one. And just to see, I'm still on 420. So we can say, the cheaper heat gun 
yeah, the cheaper heat gun needs about 420 degrees to melt the soldering wire. The other one, which of course is a bit expensive, or expensive, yeah, uh, just needs about 250 degrees. And that's why here now the question for these guys, why I use always so much, <laughs> is because this heat gun is really cheap. The temperature um, is not right what it shows you here. And the other reason why I do 100 degrees more is because I can work faster. So I don't need I don't need to heat up the chip so much uh, or we can say so so a long time, you know. So when I, I uh, it's uh, we can say the same thing with the solder station. If I uh, if I set it on 350 degrees, I can soldering faster. If I just solder, uh, if I set my soldering iron, we can say on just 220 or 250 degrees. That means I need to solder a long time till it gets hot, and that's why I sometimes do about 100 degrees hotter because then I can work faster, and it's a bit better for the chips because they get not so long time hot. All right, the other thing is also now, um, I don't know if I will show you this because I had a guy also on another video, he was telling me, how did you get this chip out with a heat gun? That's not true, that's not possible, this is a fake. <laughs> this guy was telling me this is a fake and I don't like these people because they believe a shit. But all the rest that already knows me, they really know. That I really took out this chip, we can say, uh, just with a heat gun. Um, the other thing is now, yeah, I don't know, but I can do a test also with this one here. I will uh, just set it on about 350 degrees, which are the temps that should be enough. Yeah, let's... Let's let it like this, 350, 360, doesn't matter for me. And um, yeah, the other thing is now, I need to focus this right now. I hope you can see that good, otherwise I will focus it back and I will just later in the video, wait, because the lights, and I should go down here a bit for you guys. So, all right. This should be better for you now. Um, yeah, I can now uh, go on here and... Uh, wait, I need to fix this tree pot here. I can go now on here and uh, try, uh, we can say, um, to take off this chip here. This is a, sm a smaller chip here now. This should be very easy. You got here, we can say, uh, a chip a sucker. I call this sucker, I don't know the name in English, but I think it's the right name. So when it gets hot, you can just take it away, you just press it here and you let it go and then this sucks the chip up. Otherwise, you can just take something like this here and uh, whatever. Um, now, um, let me just search it. Now we just need also some flux because you get all out better with, all, uh, with some flux. So now um, you can heat it up on about 200 degrees. I'm talking here about real 200 degrees. With a heat gun like this, you need uh, 1000 <laughs> degrees. No, just kidding. So let's put you some uh, put you some flux. You can see here. I'm going over there and here. This video now is also for the guy that told me this is a fake, this cannot be true, and whatever, and this guy was hating on me, you know, so uh, I give a shit what he thinks, here comes the proof now, <laughs> I got already one somewhere, wait, 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 here we go, I got here already one, also take out, or oh, I have talked it out with a heat gun without problems. So where's the problem? I don't know. I don't know. But this guy or this guys has not believed me. So let's see. Um, I will now go with this one, which as it will take years to take this off with this temperatures because I know 
this 350 degrees this is not true so I would need here about 450 or 500 degrees but let's do a test about one minute and you will see this will not just get off because the heat gun is just very cheap and uh, yeah but let's see what I can do so let's just check 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 300 320 and it goes up we are now at 350 and let's begin I hope the lights are okay We are now on 380 degrees with this heat gun. You can't see that, but uh, as more down I get, as hotter the heat gun gets because the air gets close. So just watch it quickly, just that you can see I'm not cheating on you. So I think this was now about one minute or two. I will now just try to leave or to take off the chip. Just try to move the chip. Like you can see, nothing. The chip will not come off. Because we have not we have not the real uh, 370 degrees so this is just a video that you guys can see what I'm talking about now uh, I will set the same on let's see you can see that yeah let's zoom back a bit I will now go for this hit gun here let's do here also at 370 just like on the yellow one and now let's try it with this one and let me zoom again back for you guys here we go let's do a test now with this one I hope the lights are good I already can see how it works, it works a lot faster like you can see the flux, you can see it's really working a lot faster, now let's try, ok just a little bit more, yeah I can feel it already and you can see it's working a lot faster, here we go now, you see that? look, 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 ok now well, let's just take the uh, chip sucker and here we go so, here we go guys Oopala. let's suck it back put it uh, Come on, no, no problem. Take it here and put it there. All right, guys. Here's why I have made this video, so you guys, uh, let's focus in here. Can see right now. This is just a perfect work. And yes, yes, with a heat gun, <laughs> with a heat gun. So what's the problem? If you want to take bigger chips out. You need to put some grill under there because you need also about 250 degrees under the board and then you will also be able to take a bigger chip out without problems. I have also here some motherboard. Um, let's 
let's show you this quickly that here also one just perfectly tog it out also with a heat gun now we just need to clean all yeah this takes a lot of time this is also all with the heat gun and later you can just place this uh, stuffs here I don't know the name in English you just can place all back also all with a heat gun without problems with a heat gun you can take a lot of stuff out also like this you can take this chips out you can do a lot of stuff with a heat gun if you know how you should work with it that's just simple so I hope um, you have understand this video the most important thing is that you know your we can say uh, <laughs> that you know your work, that you know how to work with that and uh, again for the guys that ha uh, was asking me why I use so much we can say um, temperatures uh, the reason is because this heat gun here is a lot better as we can say this heat gun here and this is a cheap heat gun so here you will need to set about 400 or 500 degrees to reflow a chip like this because otherwise you will not be able to repair we can say a yellow light of that because the the soldering bolts we can say the the contacts will not get melt you just will yeah we can say heat them up a bit the playstation will work for a while but not forever so that's why you should reflow it really great otherwise um it will not work for a long time and with a heat gun like this you can do really great reflowings you can also reflow really good with this one if you know how to work with it okay this is very important so if you don't know the heat gun then you also will never learn or never know uh, how to work with that and that's why you can test it with some soldering wire you can test the temps if they are really right or not and I can tell you the most cheap heat guns the temperature they are just not real okay so if you set here 300 degrees on the background it's maybe about 150 degrees okay and uh, on great heat guns like this one um, yeah you can buy it it was not so uh, we can say expensive it's a heat gun from Einhell it's a very good manufacturer and the model name you can also see here it's the model name um, RTHA2000E so if you search on eBay I bet my ass you will find it okay um, I think I have nothing more to say now you have see how to get a small chip out and then you need to clean all maybe I will show you this uh, one time as I got more time because I'm uh, no father from uh, three kiddies and I got a lot to do and uh, then you will need here you can see also on this motherboard I have just took out the the Nord chip and uh, here you will now just need to clean all with a soldering iron or soldering station and then you will need to clean all this stuff and yeah this is maybe not too much focus <laughs> But uh, I hope you have understand the most. This was now just a quick video to explain you why I have on my other videos set so much temperatures to reflow uh, PlayStation. And I also need to say um, if you give your PlayStation to some manufacturers to let repair or reballing, reballing means that they clean all this chip and then they too uh, we can say they put you new soldering balls over there and then they sold back your chip to the motherboard and this uh, yeah works after that of course too but some peoples outside there will not do you a reflow that's why you should take care because these peoples are some pirates some assholes that trying to tell you that they have we bought something but they have not and the other important thing is also that if you give your playstation for a rewalling tell them guys to cut the heat spreader out okay because if they if they don't cut the heat spreader out and they do a rewalling 
This gets really hot inside there and the thermal compound here inside will get very, uh, we can say, dry and bad. So if they will repair you this, it can be that after two or three months later, your PlayStation 3 fan will run like hell. It will run crazy because the thermal compound, because the thermal compound here inside is damaged because they have done a reballing without to take you, we can say, the uh, heat spread result. That's a very important thing, guys. And that's why I say sometimes it's not worth, we can say mostly, it's not worth to pay a lot of money for a reball because it will not hold that much longer as a reflow. <laughs> And the other thing is, you can get for that money a great used PlayStation 3, which you open all and you cool it down just like me on my videos, and then you have peace for a longer time. Alright guys, that was me, NSC in the place to be, hee <laughs> hee, have fun, peace, subscribe here, thumbs up, and take care of you all, and yeah, I wish you the best. Peace, NSC in the place to be. And see in the place to be and see.